Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. In recent episodes, I have been building a package to classify 16S rRNA gene sequences. Um, even if that doesn't mean anything to you, please keep watching because I think you'll still get a lot out of this episode and all the other episodes in the playlist, which I'll link to up above here. In the last episode, I wrote a function called read underscore FASTA that reads in a FASTA file. A FASTA file is a very common format of uh, DNA sequence information that you will see across bioinformatics. The basics of it is that the first line has a greater than sign as the first character, and that is followed by the sequence ID or the accession or the name of the sequence without any spaces. After a space, then to everything to the right of it on that line, we can perhaps think of as being a comment or some type of metadata that's being embedded in that header line. The following lines then indicate the sequence, right? So typically uh, the sequences will be stored on a single line, but it's also possible that those might be split across multiple lines if the sequence is really long. I have often seen these lines broken at about 80 characters per line. So you can imagine having the full length gene at about 1500 nucleotides being spread across maybe like, you know, 18 to 20 different lines. So what we want to do is make sure that those lines get concatenated together. The FASTA formatted file then will have those two sets of lines, the header and the sequence, repeated many times. The file that I'm working with for my reference database has about 25,000 lines in it, but if we're working with unknown data from next generation sequences, we might have millions of lines, right? And so it's important to get this function to run quickly. Now, there are other packages out there that have something like read underscore fast day. I could have used those. Some of them have some interface problems I've found. So one of them I'm familiar with uh, requires users to have to use Bioconductor to use it. Um, others um, are tools that I haven't really heard of and I'm not really familiar with uh, how often they're being maintained or what, whether they're being developed or how well they've been tested. And also, <laughs> I'm in the process of learning how to do this stuff by building an R package. So I wanted to write my own read underscore FASTA file. So we're gonna use this read underscore FASTA file in two steps. So in the first step, it's to read in the reference FASTA file. Then we'll also want to read in our unknown sequences. So as I've been building out a vignette, I've been looking at you know one, two, three, four different sequences. But like I said, we could get to a point where we may possibly have millions of sequences. And so we wanna improve that. So as I was laying in bed that night, as I recorded the video, I started thinking that function was really a bit kludgy and had a little, lot of stuff going on that was probably a little bit complicated and too confusing to understand. And if I was confused as I was writing it and perhaps not describing it very effectively, then I bet you were having a hard time understanding it. And I bet, uh, Pat, say in 2025, when I come back to this, we'll look at that code and just be like, what was I thinking? So let's go ahead and spend a little bit of time looking back at our read underscore fast day file. There's two things that I wanna focus on. The first is how do we read in text file that's unformatted? And then the second thing I wanna think about is how can we vectorize the procedure so that we don't have to worry about loops and updating the vectors as we go. As we've seen in previous episodes, when you have to update individual values of a vector, things can go very long. Head over now to our studio. I've got my vignette.r script set up here. Again, this is kind of just a tutorial in the making of different steps. And I've been taking different kind of chunks of code like I have here for lines nine through um, 11, that someday, maybe in the next episode, we'll go ahead and convert this into its own function of say like read taxonomy. And that's effectively what we did here with read fast day. And so I'll go ahead and load these different lines. If you wanna get the code and the project as I currently have it right now, go down below in the description and you'll see a link to GitHub for the starting position, um, the, the initial commit that we're working with today, as well as the commit that you'll find that I make at the end of today's episode. So I'll go ahead and load the tidyverse as well as my FASTA and taxonomy file names. I'll go ahead and load the package. Um, I'm going to wrap this in micro benchmark to get a sense initially of how long it takes to run. Um, and so we'll do this, right? And then the argument we'll use is times equals 10 to do 10 reps of line seven here. And it will then report the summary statistics. So this is in units of seconds. So we see that the median or mean is about 1.09 seconds. It's not the end of the world. Again, if I were to run this by itself, it takes a beat, right? 
And again, if we had many more sequences, so say we had uh, 10 to the 5, 100,000, right, uh, divided by 25,000, then we could imagine it's going to take four seconds, right? And we can kind of scale up from that. And if you had a million, it might take about 40 seconds or so. So it's not the end of the world, but people I find when they're using a tool in R, they're expecting things to be pretty instantaneous. So I want to see if we can speed this up a bit. Okay, so the other thing that we should do is go ahead and let's um, test it to make sure all our tests pass. That's good. Our tests are lit. Thank you. So the next thing that I want to do, because I don't want to go into diagnosing what's wrong with read fast day, kind of half cocked, is I want to go ahead and profile it. And so we'll do prof this on prof this, right? And then we'll go ahead and put in our FASTA DF there. We'll go ahead and run this. And then this outputs what uh, the process looks like and how long it's spending in different parts of um, the function, right? And so I'm surprised that the scan command doesn't take up more time, um, which is interesting. But uh, what we find is, again, we've got a lot of time being spent in this uh, STRI detect regex. Um, and so it's spending about a quarter of the time looking to see if a line has a greater than sign in that first character. So that's pretty slow, I would think, but hey, I don't know. Um, and then we're doing some parsing on these three lines, or these two lines here, right? Line 29 and 30, as well as 32 and 33. And this is where we're getting the sequence succession or ID or name, as well as the comment. And then a fair amount of time is spent um, pasting together the different sequences. So if we have a sequence that is multiple lines, it then pastes them together to get them to be a single thing. But the data I'm giving it, all those sequences are already on a single line. So it's a bit of um, it's a bit of a waste of code for at least this application. But again, if we had applications where a sequence was spread across multiple lines, that would be more useful. Okay, so I am going to step back and Something I'm noticing actually, now that I look at this a little bit closer, is the, um, let's see, the, um, we're missing like the first <laughs> 350 milliseconds. And if I had to guess, that is happening in the read. Um, and for some reason, it's not showing scan here. And so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do some benchmarking on that uh, read function. Okay, and so I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new R script. So here in read fast a, we're generating a ve vector called fast a data that's generated from the scan function, which basically reads in all of the data from the file. Um, it gets the number of lines, it initializes the vectors, and then it loops through um, th the fast a data, basically trying to figure out if each line is a header or a sequence and then parsing it accordingly. So let's start up here at the top because as I said, I think this first like 350 milliseconds or so is spent in scan. And so let's go ahead and take our scan here and I'll plop that here. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, from my vignette, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this fast A and maybe I'll call this file to keep things simple. All right. And so then we can do micro benchmark and micro benchmark, okay. And we'll need a closing parenthesis here. And we'll also do times equals 10. Uh, I find that while we might get greater precision doing 100 <laughs> um, as our times, it's probably not super necessary for the level of precision we actually need. So again, just to test for ourselves that this works. Yeah, you know what? It's taking about 374 milliseconds to run, which kind of correlates with what we're seeing here. So again, I think the prof is, is leaving out that initial read. Okay, so that's scan. There's a few other approaches that we can use. One other from base R would be read uh, lines. Um, and that's with a capital L, read lines. And we can then say file uh, as our argument. And I'm gonna go ahead and look at the help for this because I don't use these functions a lot and so I might be a little bit off. Um, and so we're looking at the one from base. And so let's see. Um, so I think we give it an, a connection object or a character string 
And then as long as we don't touch N, it's gonna read in the whole file. So I think we're good with read lines. Um, we can always test this by running each line individually. And we see that at least for scan, it comes out as a vector, which is what we want. Um, and then read lines comes out as a vector as well. And so that's good. And so let's go ahead and compare those. And here we find that read lines is quite a bit faster. I'm gonna go ahead and um, assign these uh, to um, some value on the left side of an equal sign. That'll clean up our output over here. So the next approach I wanna try is using data table. And so if we did something like data.table fread, so fread is a really fast tool for reading in uh, formatted data, right? So we don't have formatted data, but I think we could still use it for this. So if we do like file, we then um, get this as output. And so then we can see that like the, the lines or the rows of the data file are numbered. Um, and so we could do this, but I would wanna make it on an apples to apples comparison where we would probably want to be making sure that um, we're outputting it as a vector. And actually, as I look at this, I'm a little bit concerned about what it's using for the column headers. So I'm kind of gonna go back up to the top of this output. And so it's using this <laughs> as my column header. And so I think what I need to do is look at the arguments here and we'll go ahead and let's, let's look at the help. So we'll do data.table freed. And I forgot the question mark. Again, most of the time when I'm using freed, I'm looking at uh, tabular data. And so it's got a delimiter, right? And so let's see, I'm gonna say header equals false, I believe. And so let's see what that does. Header equals false. There's the V1. So now we see that it's doing the header correctly. Um, and I though want to convert this into a vector. And so I can do dollar sign V1. And so this then outputs it as a vector. I can prove that to myself by piping this to STR. And I see, yeah, sure enough, it's a character vector. And so what I'll do is go ahead and grab this without the STR. And I'll call this DT and run this benchmark. Wow, now we've really made some gains in speed. We're at about 90 milliseconds compared to 375 and 229, which we had for the base R implementations. So that's really fast. The next approach I want to try is the read lines function from read R. So read R, um, read underscore lines. I think we can give it file, right? And so this seems to read things in pretty well um, and not need any other arguments. It's coming in as a vector. Again, we could do question mark read R, read lines to see if there's any arguments that we're missing. Uh, it reads up to n max lines from a file. Uh, let's see. No, I think that's pretty good. And we don't have to worry about headers or anything. It's reading it in as a vector. So let's go ahead then and grab this. And we'll plop that up in here. And I'll call this r underscore l. Uh, and yeah, so let's go ahead and run this. And so that's even faster <laughs> at 65 milliseconds. Great. So there's another read lines function that's a bit different, and this is coming from a package called Vroom, like Vroom Vroom, right? And so um, it's a bit different because it doesn't actually read in the data. It reads in effectively pointers to the data. So we'll do Vroom colon colon Vroom um, underscore lines on file. And so this again is reading in pointers and it prints it out. Um, and so that seems to work pretty well. And again, this is as a vector. So we'll do VL um, with this function, right? So we'll go ahead and copy and paste this over. And let's go ahead and run that. So that's about seven times faster than what we got with the read R version of read lines. I'm a bit concerned that that's not real, however, because why? Because it's again, storing the pointers. It's not actually storing the data and reading it into memory. So what I wanna do is an operation that then gets applied to every value um, in the data frame. So I'll go ahead and pipe this to string i, uh, stri, detect, and we'll try to detect um, in the first character that greater than sign. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy this so it's applied to every one of our tests. Again, um, the, the output from Vroom doesn't get 
instantiated or created until it's operated on. So this is called kind of like lazy evaluation. Um, and so it, it allows you to basically figure out what you actually want to read in, what you want to bring into memory before you actually do it. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and um, give this a run. Oh, and I forgot the regex, so I'll go ahead and do that. And I'll go ahead and copy this down uh, for each of the test cases. We'll go ahead and test it. And so what we find is that read lines from readr and from vroom, the vroom lines, uh, take about the same amount of time to run. So that's pretty cool. Um, and again, that's once you account for actually reading in the data for vroom. So I think what I'm gonna start out with is using read lines. And once I'm done refactoring the code, the entire function, I might come back and rerun read underscore fast day with either function, either from read R or for Vroom and see if it makes a difference. That's great. Let's go back to read fast day. And I'm going to now replace this with the code that we had in here for read R and go ahead and copy and paste this in. So I'm gonna go ahead and save and test, and that passes, that is good. I've gone ahead and loaded my updated version of read fast day. I'll go ahead then and do a prof viz on this. And what we see is that it appears to be down to about 690 milliseconds, which is pretty fast. So it's about 300 milliseconds or 0.3 seconds faster than what we had before. And this call, whatever this is, is taking about 50 milliseconds just to read in the data, right? And it seems like everything else is picking up at 100 milliseconds. So I'm not totally sure what's happening, but needless to say, it does seem to be faster um, than what we had with the scan function. So, so let's go ahead and run the micro benchmark on this as it currently is. All right, so as we've seen, this takes about 733 milliseconds. I'll go ahead and plop that there. So one of the things that stood out to me as I was thinking about this uh, is that this whole thing seems a bit kludgy, right? We're basically going through each line of FASTA data, the data that we've read in, and making decisions on what to do with it. And when we do things like this, where we have ID index, we're updating ID each time. And while it's certainly faster than doing something like this, where we're growing a vector, uh, it's still a bit slower than defining the entire vector all in one go. Now, this case here, is not that big of a concern because um, we don't expect to be doing this a lot of times, right? Um, and certainly the vectors we're generating are gonna be pretty small, but like ID, comment, and sequence are quite large. And so if we're updating the whole thing every, every step through um, FASTA data, then it's gonna take a while. So I have some ideas, as you might imagine. I'm gonna go ahead and comment out some of this code, actually nearly all of this code, so I'm gonna go ahead and generate um, a file using the data that's in my test. So we talked about this in the last episode of using temp file uh, to write all this stuff, right? And so then I can say file equals temp and I can then read it. And so now we get that beautiful data, right? With all of our different conditions that we're interested in accommodating in read underscore fast day. So some of the things that stick out to me when I look at this is that I know I need a vector with the sequence IDs, right? And so again, that's everything that's got a greater than sign. And it would be good to know what slot those will go into so that I can then say where the sequence goes, right? And so one of the things I was thinking about is that I can make a vector called like is header. And so that would be like one, zero, one, zero, right? Because true is one, false is zero. And then what I could do is like a cumulative sum across those trues and falses to get the sequence number for each of our sequence header lines, okay? Let me show you what I mean. So we'll go ahead and define that as FASTA data, right? And so then I can do string i, stri, detect, uh, and let's do regex, and we'll um, put at the front the greater than sign, and actually the string we want to match is fast day uh, data. And so now what we get are those trues and falses, right? So again, if we look at all this, that this true corresponds to this. This corresponds to this. The second slot here is false because it doesn't have that, right? And so then if I take this and pipe that into cum sum, then it's going to tell 
what sequence belongs to each ID, right? So the first two cells correspond to sequence one, right? And so that's sequence CK and then this, right? Whereas at the end, we have three sevens corresponding to this as the seventh sequence header, and then these two sequences corresponding to sequence seven as well. And so what I'm thinking is that we could go ahead and make our ID column by extracting the, the name and the comment from those cases where um, str detect re regex is true. And we can then basically pull that out. And then we can keep track of the sequence number for all of our sequence data. And then we can use a function called tapply to basically paste together everything that has the same sequence number. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And let's see what we can do with this. So again, what I'm thinking, uh, if we borrow our code from down here, we'll go ahead and grab this here. And so again, we get those trues and falses. And um, we'll say is header. And so then we can say header lines on fasta data is header, right? And so I guess maybe we should call this header lines. Okay, let's try that again. And so now we see we've got all of our header lines, right? So that's cool. Um, and then we'll come back and clean that up in a bit. But then we also want our sequences and we didn't know our sequence numbers, right? And so if we did cum sum is header, we get all of those, right? So I'll go ahead and call this seek number. And so we'll go ahead and do seek lines. So that will be fast a data and not uh, is header. And so there we get our eight different sequences. And again, these last two are the ones that correspond to that sequence seven that we'll ultimately want to be pasting together. Um, I'm actually gonna change this uh, from seek number to number. Uh, and so I have a reason for that. Um, and so that's because I wanna get the number for each of the sequences, the number of sequence that each of these sequence fragments belongs to, okay? And so then seek number is going to then be number, not is header. And so then seek number is there, right? And so this is sequence one, so forth, and those last two are sequence seven, right? Cool. So now what we can do is t apply. So let's look at the t apply function. We've talked about a variety of apply functions over the past few episodes. And so basically it'll apply a function to each cell of a ragged array. That is to each non-empty group of values or data rows given by a unique combination of the levels of certain factors. So X um, is basically our data. Um, and so, and then index is the factors that we're going to split things on. So X would be like seek lines. That's what we're going to go ahead and uh, join over. Seek number is going to be the index and then the function is going to be paste. And so what we'll do is T apply and then we'll do seek lines, seek number, and then we'll do paste. Oh, and I think I forgot to load all these things, all right? And so now what we see is that it more or less does what we wanted, right? It's got for each of those different seek numbers, the uh, sequence data. And so the paste didn't quite do what we wanted it to do. And so we need to give it another argument, which we had used down below, right? So this is basically the step we're doing here. And so we need to use collapse equals uh, double quotes. So collapse equals double quotes. We now see that sure enough, we get that. Um, this appears to be some type of weird format. I'm not sure what it is. So let's go ahead and do str on that. And it's a character vector with names. And so we can get rid of those names actually uh, by doing unname. And so that's great. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. And let's go ahead and uh, replace this and put that on the next line. And we'll go ahead and call the sequences on that. Cool. Um, and so now we have sequences that, and now we have to go back and fix up our sequence names, right? And so we had header lines um, being all this. And so now what we'd like to do is come back to what we had down below here 
And we're not worried about this anymore, but we're thinking about the comment and the ID. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab basically these lines 37 through 41, and I'll plop them up here and remove the comments. And let's go ahead and bring them over a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and remove um, what I'm assigning it to. Maybe I'll put that behind a comment. Right, and this as well. And so instead of ID line, I want header lines, header lines, right? And again, header lines looks like we'd expect. When we pipe this in, we get back the sequence names. That's good. And we pipe this out, we get back the comments. And that's great, right? So um, we can now go ahead and assign this back to ID and comment, but we don't have index, right? So we'll go ahead and remove that index variable. And we've basically vectorized the whole thing without having to worry about updating individual cells in that vector. That's pretty slick, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and save and test. Doesn't pass, actually. That's a fail. Ah, and it's complaining because um, read in fast day, day formatted data generates data frame. Um, and so what we're finding is that actual is a character vector, expected is a data frame. And that is because I forgot to turn this into a data frame like we had down here. So I'll go ahead and comment that out and we'll do ID equals ID sequence equals sequence and then comment equals comment. And I've got an extra square brace there. So now let's go ahead and test it. <sighs> it failed, but hopefully we'll get there soon. So it's saying can't converse, can't coerce class function to a data frame. Um, and if I had to guess, I probably said sequence equals sequence, and it's, I think perhaps sequence is. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this a sequence. I think sequence is the name of the function, and so that's a little bit weird. Maybe sequences is a function, which is it? Sequences, no, it must be sequence, is like the seek function, right? All right, so anyway, we'll go ahead and test that. That passes, wonderful. Go ahead and load the package, and then let's go ahead and run the benchmark. You'll recall that previously we were at 733 milliseconds and see if we've gotten any faster. Sure enough, we are. We've cut that almost in half to about 387 milliseconds. So that's, you know, a third of a second. That's, that's pretty fantastic. Um, let's go ahead and profile it and see what things look like now. And let's see. Um, so it's spending, again, most of the time in this um, STRI detect regex. And then we also have this uh, STR replace all regex, and then this second one as well. And then it's spending a fair amount of time in this T apply. So the first thing I'll try is seeing if we can improve upon this um, STRI detect regex. And one option that we might think about using, uh, let's go ahead and remove this commented out code since it's not really necessary anymore. Um, and we could do STRI starts with, um, and then we'll do fixed. So this function will look for a fixed character, a single character. And so the, it'll look for a string that starts in this case with that greater than sign. I'll go ahead and load that. And let's go ahead and profile it again. So first of all, what I'm looking at, we see 370 milliseconds to run the whole thing. Um, and profile one was 390. So we cut off 20 milliseconds, not a huge deal. Um, and this, um, this line 13 that we had modified seems to be um, reduced as well. So I see that the it's spending a fair amount of time in tapply running the function, and I'm not sure what that is. A unique default, nah, that's not very helpful, um, except we know that the function that we're using to paste it all together is paste, right? And so down here we had paste, and I think what we could do instead is string i, uh, stri underscore c, with collapse. So this will go ahead and collapse together the vector. So we can go ahead and save and test, make sure that does what we think. Yep, I'll go ahead and load that, and then we'll run the profiler down to 280 milliseconds. That took off about 100 milliseconds, so that made it quite a bit faster. And let me get some more real estate here so we can see what's happening, that we really shortened that up, right? And so what we have also now are these two uh, stree replace all regex functions. And so there's a couple things that I think we might be able to do to speed this up as well. Um, so first of all, we're not looking for more than one case of that pattern, right? 
And so what we're really looking for is the first, right? So we'll say first regex and as well here. Um, the other thing that I'm thinking about, at least for the comment, I think we can also modify some of this where I think storing the data in the parentheses and then putting it in the replacement value probably also takes a fair amount of space. And really all we wanna do is get rid of this stuff and return this, right? And so if we go ahead and remove that and then make this empty double quotes, right? Basically we're gonna copy or basically we're gonna match the greater than sign, the sequence ID, and then any space that follows and replace that with nothing to get back our comment. I'm gonna go ahead and save and test to make sure it all still works. Go ahead and load everything and then run profviz again. So comparing these two, I noticed that those changes didn't do anything. <laughs> um, and so I don't think it really matters how I ran those regexes. And so I was thinking about perhaps coming back to this more complicated case, but I think we can leave that as is. Um, you know what, I'm probably gonna put this back to where I had it before, because this I think is a more complete regular expression that um, I understand better. I will go ahead and leave those replace first regexes in there. Let's go ahead and save that and test, make sure everything works. And then we'll go ahead and let's go ahead and micro benchmark it. I'll go ahead and close these profiling uh, tabs. All right. And then if we come back, let's go ahead and run this. And again, we're at about 240 milliseconds, about three times faster than what we got with read fast a using the scan function. And so that reminds me that we should come back here and try to see what happens um, if we repeat this function to see what happens if instead of using read lines from read R, we use the vroom, uh, vroom lines. So I'll go ahead and save that. Let's go ahead and test to make sure it all works. Good. I'll go ahead and load it so we have access to it. Then I'll go ahead and run the micro benchmark. And lo and behold, <laughs> it's actually about 100 milliseconds slower than what we've got with the read R packet. So I'll go ahead and remove that and save that. Again, test just to make sure everything is good. So we need to go ahead and do a at import uh, from, and we're gonna import a couple things, right? So we'll do read R, and then we'll do read lines, and then we'll do another import from string I, and we'll then do string starts with fixed, line, with fixed and then, um, Three replace first regex and I think that's it. So we'll go ahead and save that. Let's go ahead and do document, All right? So that um, it's upset about some of my documentation. So now when we look at the namespace, we see that it's importing from read R, read lines, and that we also have uh, these two new uh, string I functions that we brought in previously. So that's cool. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and bail out of here. I'll go ahead and save this untitled benchmarking script back up into my benchmarking directory. And I'll say this as benchmarking uh, read file. So I will go ahead now and commit this and post it up to GitHub. You'll be able to get the link to GitHub as it currently stands down below in the description. So in the next episode, we're gonna turn our attention to reading in tabular data when we try to read in that taxonomy file. So that you don't miss that episode, please make sure you've subscribed to the channel and I'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.